This morning we have the wonderful blessing of having one of our own families coming and sharing with us the sermon. We have the Greaves family whom you, very, I'm 100% sure that you know through their uh, beautiful service and commitment to St. Matthew's and the ways they are involved in the life of this uh, congregation with their children and their extended family and their extended family and their friends and all the beauty that they bring. We asked them uh, a month ago, I think, to see if they could preach this morning and uh, they said yes. So this morning we are in for a treat as they're gonna be sharing with us what it means for them to be generous and thankful to God. So can we give a hand of appreciation to the Greece family? Good morning, everybody. Would you pray with me? Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I have a confession. Sometimes I just don't feel like giving. Now, I know God wants me to give. After all, Christ is the very embodiment of giving. I want to respond to God's goodness and provision and greatness with worship through my hands and through my storehouse. I want to respond like Abram did in today's reading from Genesis, which by the way is the very first time that tithing was mentioned in the Bible. I want to respond to God's provision with such gratitude. But the truth is, Sometimes I let my human fears or self-centeredness or even selfishness creep into my initial thought response. I don't feel like getting up early to teach Sunday school today. I wonder if I could take a pass. That's one of my students. <laughs> if we give that much money, will we be able to afford this need or that want? If that response seems even the tiniest bit familiar to any of you, I have good news. Every single time I have given to God or to his people, I have gotten back much more than I gave. Like the time when I was emotionally exhausted and riled up upset with a family member and I showed up to teach Sunday school even though the thought crossed my mind that I was not feeling it that morning. The Bible story we taught was about David, and the Bible verse was, God sees the heart. And those little people ministered to me so well when they shared their own experiences of how God sees the heart. They gifted me with a balm for my soul and a well-needed attitude adjustment. Or like the time when Bill, my husband, lost his job, our only source of income, one week before our last child was born, Chantal. And we needed to drastically pare down our budget immediately. And the thought crossed my mind that maybe our tithes should be a candidate for revision. Yet we did it God's way, and he provided every single thing our family needed for nearly one year of his unemployment. And as a bonus that we had no idea was coming. This is unexpected. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm eating up our time. <laughs> we timed everything. And as a bonus that we had no idea was coming, Bill was able to spend real quality time with his father and his sister. 
this never happens, with his father and his sister who both passed away in the months after his first sabbatical ended. That's how the Jesus economy works. When you give back to God what he has already given you, he rewards you with even more than you deserve or could even imagine. I sometimes forget that. Sometimes God has to remind me of all the ways that he's been faithful and merciful to me. Sometimes he reminds me through other people. Sometimes I have to be filled with the stories of God's faithfulness and mercy through his word. And sometimes all I have is a prayer to have the heart of Christ and to be obedient. In all things, I can testify that in my life, the Jesus economy works. Try it and see. Hello. <clears throat> uh, my name is Liam Greaves. I'm their only son, so. <laughs> Um, all right, so when I was younger, my idea of giving and especially tithing was quite limited. Uh, I had done the math, uh, $10 a month allowance was way below the poverty line. So <laughs> I was fairly certain that I was exempt. <laughs> uh, but that mentality for me really changed during the confirmation process. And it's actually fitting that uh, our series is on prayers, presence, gifts, and service because that's it was during that meeting that I really started to understand the different ways that you could give. Uh, giving wasn't limited to you know, sitting in the pews on Sunday mornings, uh, fishing in your pockets for some change and you know, putting it in the bin. It was, it was more than that. It was an extension of God's love that he gave to us and that we're giving out into our worlds and our communities. And that became a part of my relationship with God, of my weekly process, if you would. Uh, but God doesn't call us to be people of process. He calls us to be people of love and of caring. And I've tried my best, I think, to, to incorporate that in, into my life. And, and especially coming into college, first of all, the uh, stereotypes of college kids are true. We are all broke, at least in my case. Uh, <laughs> But the love of Jesus and the love of God is still there. And I think this really hit me earlier this week. Uh, on Wednesday, I was attending a concert with one of my friends in Washington, D.C. And you know, it was a normal night, uh, but we actually ended up passing uh, a lady on the street who you know, beckoned us over and, and asked uh, if we could spare any change. Her name was Miriam. Uh, Miriam was experiencing homelessness. And... You know, on a, first of all, Wednesday is the middle of the week. That's as far away from Sunday as you can get. You know, and my budget didn't account for you know spending time with Miriam, but the love of God, you know, that's what called for it. And so you know, we sat with her. We sat and we prayed and we asked for her name and and we talked and and all that all the while I was thinking, wow. This, this love can only be given from God. And this was the type of love that was given to me growing up. This was the type of love given to our family you know, when daddy didn't have a job, when I had two broken arms. The type of love given to our family as we're going through you know, all of our struggles. And I think this is the type of love that we're called you know, to give to this church in all the ways that, that this church helps our community and helps us. So... Uh, I just want to end with a quote, slightly altered, uh, but I think this, this really captures you know, how giving is a part of my life and a part of our family's life. So give all the ways that you can, you know, with all the means that you have, you know, in all the ways that you can. You know, give in all the places that you can. Give at all the times that you can. Give to all the people that you can. Give as long as ever you can, because God gave himself for us.
Hello. Um, I'm Anne Therese Greaves, oldest daughter. I put quotes there because I have an older cousin who's like a sister. Um, having grown up going to church, there are a few things that as a child, I never really questioned until I was older. I think a lot of kids have a similar experience to mine. Sunday morning, offering is the next thing up in the service, and your parents hand you a dollar to put in the plate as it's passed down the pew. It's not your dollar, nor does it seem like particularly much in the grand scheme of things, but I think as a child, there's a small sense of pride that comes with that. I gave to that. I gave today, me. When I got a little older, and I started having some pocket money of my own, but not enough to consistently contribute, I started to question that a little bit. What exactly was the point of my parents giving that money to me to put in the plate? It wasn't mine, and as I started to get older and I started to have more and more things that I could actually call my own, in a way, I felt that it was less genuine because of that, like I was starting to just go through the motions. But in really taking time to consider and dig a little deeper, I felt that the point of my parents doing that was to put me in the attitude and mindset for giving, more than anything else. And in realizing that, it helped me focus on giving in the ways I can in life, even if it all isn't always through gifts. Like Liam, when you become a member of the United Methodist Church, there's something in the vows that has stuck with me, the different facets of giving. Not only do we give through our gifts, but we also give through our prayers, our presence, our service, and our witness. Personally, my focus recently has been service and presence. Despite being lacking in many ways, I know that I can give through my presence and by showing up for others when they need it. I know that I can give by being a pillar for other people even when I need a pillar myself, by lending a listening ear like I sometimes need, by giving a hand in small ways which are just imp as important as the bigger ones. Sometimes it doesn't seem like enough and there's always more that can be done. But in 2 Corinthians 8:12 we are assured that if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. So I encourage us all to adjust our mindsets for giving. We may not always be able to give in the same way we have in the past. Life is fluid in that way. Our circumstances change, and that's just the nature of the lives we're living. But we can make a conscious choice to live with the mindset of giving at the forefront, no matter what happens or how our situations shift. We all have gifts to give in some way, whether that presents itself through a dollar in the offering plate or an understanding heart for those who need it or whatever way God calls you to be generous. So let's live with that in mind and make giving more than just going through the motions. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chantal. I'm the youngest, and I'm still in high school, and I'm also the least eloquent in the family, so bear with me. <laughs> um, I don't have a job. The only constant source of income I get is from my allowance and the money I get on Christmas and my birthday, which honestly doesn't add up to a lot. But like Antara said, it's about being in an attitude of giving. When I get my allowance or my birthday money, I always take a portion of it to give to God. And that's because even though I'm young and don't always understand the full scope of things, I know that all I, I know that all I, I've been directed, sorry, I'm not eloquent as I said. I know that we have all been directly impacted by the generosity of this church. And when I get money of my own, I want to use that money to allow others to feel the same impact that I have felt. Having been to Liberia multiple times, because that's where my family is from, I have had the opportunity to meet students at our sister school and see how our tithings have affected their lives. They have been able to have a better education experience because of what we have given to them. And this giving doesn't only help improve the lives of those overseas who are less fortunate than us, it also affects people right here in Maryland like me. I have been able to go on ASP, repair houses, and connect with families because the money that this church gives to fund our trips. I've gone to DC over the summer and giving goodie bags to homeless men and women. I've been able to go camping, something I've always wanted to do but my family has never supported. <laughs> <laughs> and
and deepen my connection with God and just be at peace. Your, generos your generosity allows youth like me to have an opportunity to have fellowship with other young Christians and grow in our faith through mission. It's not just financial donations that count the most. Signing up to be an adult chaperone for one of our trips or being a mentor to an eighth grader going through confirmation or even baking cookies for the UMYF group on Sunday nights, which I assure you is greatly appreciated. It's about giving of what you have, giving of your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and your witness, because that's what counts. Because I can assure you that someone is feeling the impact of your generosity, whether that person is across the globe or sitting next to you in your pew. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, number one, um, I've cried in this stand a few times before, and Dee Dee's always laughed at me afterwards. <laughs> so I'm not saying that I'm going to laugh at her at home, but I'm going to laugh at her when we, go, when we get home. <laughs> no. Um, ah, what can I say? Secondly, what, what I'm about to say, nothing I can say really is going to be as good as what you've already heard from the four people who preceded me. So my daughter, Chantal, keeps, kept saying she was the least eloquent one, but I think uh, I may have to take that mantle. Um, I truly live a blessed life. That's where things start. Paraphrasing from uh, Christianity today, uh, the word stewardship comes from the Greek word oikinomos, which means somebody who manages a household. A person doesn't own, own the household, but manages it and stewards in the ancient world, of course, were trusted with everything from seeing that the houses and floors were clean to the finances. Often they were public, the public face of, of that household. Uh, Joseph was a good example uh, of that. So we're not owners but we've been trusted with resources and the care of everything, of creation, of gifts, of talents, money, time, the gospel, all for the sake of God's purposes, God's purposes in the world. And when we give back to God just a little piece of what he gave to us, what he's entrusted to us, we're to do the following. One, we're, we're to give out of devotion and worship, not out of obligation, as exemplified in this morning's reading from Genesis. We're to give of our first fruits, as stated in the reading from Proverbs. And, and uh, the reading that was read actually was not the one we, we said, and I'm going to read it, but you read something about wisdom and that actually resume, resonated with me. <laughs> I think we're supposed to hear that we're supposed to be wise with uh, how we use our funds. But the, the, the reading um, from Proverbs says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. So we're asked to give of our first fruits, not of the leftovers. And we're asked to give from our hearts, not from your excess, just as it was beautifully illustrated by the old lady's offering in, in the gospel reading today. So as you can hopefully tell from the words you've heard from my family today, we're all striving to embody this holistic view of stewardship in our lives. It's not, nothing short of amazing, though, when you stop and take a look, and I, I think you, it was touched on by, by each one of them, but when you stop and take a look at all the different ways in which um, tithing, but, but stewardship in general, just the giving, has touched us personally, and specifically the, the, the giving to this church. Um, Operation Classroom, as Chantal uh, mentioned, we've had the opportunity to go to Liberia, sit in, the, in the, the classrooms with the students and hear the principal and the, and the faculty be so appreciative of the fact that they're going to get a paycheck because 
those scholarships that we give help to pay their salaries. The students who got the scholarships are happy because instead of them being out hawking, they're actually allowed to be in school because someone paid their school fees. ASP, sitting in uh, the home of someone who never had a bathroom, had to go out to an outhouse as we're putting in plumbing. Seeing um, the tears streaming down the face of someone as we make an addition to his house and build him a deck so that he can sit out for the first time. Bowie Food Pantry, something we kind of take for granted. We see the cart going back and forth in this narthex all the time, but how many people just wouldn't have food, would have to choose which meal to eat or maybe not eat if not for what we give here. And then church on the move, how many times I was at the, the house last year where we, I think we cut through an African jungle it felt like and the appreciation of the homeowner for all the little things that were being done or the appreciation on the faces of the folks at Hartfields as the choir sang. Or UMYF, something near and dear to my heart because I've been involved with it for the last 20 something years. And uh, you know, we get cookies. Uh, <laughs> We get to go on different outings. And over the last 20 years, we've impacted a lot of lives. And there are a lot of um, youth from this church who have either come back here or gone on to be youth leaders elsewhere, some here. And they're giving back to their communities, all because of the giving that happened through this stewardship of St. Matthew's. And then, you know, we can't sit in this sanctuary on this first real cold day of the year and not take stock with the fact that we're not cold. I can't look at the organ and listen to the bells and see, hear, you know, Isaac's jokes <laughs> or look over and see Pastor Daniel or Miss Chelsea or Carolyn Denny and not appreciate the fact that the giving that this church gives makes sure that we have these things that we can take for granted. So we don't always think of the many ways that our gifts touch us directly, but they do. They touch us and they touch so many others. As we were coming up the stairs from the back way this morning, I, I read this big poster which says, we are each unique and beautiful, but together we are a masterpiece. I want to paraphrase that by saying our individual gifts are unique and beautiful, but together they are God's masterpiece. Amen.